Hello, and welcome to the general Microsoft 365 development special interest group is our bi-weekly sync, and it is August 6th, 2020. Welcome to the call. First off, we will do our agenda for the day. We've got latest on CSOM Core, the PowerShell, the modernization tooling, and Yo Teams. Then we've got three great demos coming up with Chris, Madhan, and Marcus. Chris showing us some more list formatting magic. Madhan is going to show us the Grow Your Skills app template. And Marcus is going to give us a great overview of Microsoft Teams messaging extension and talk about the authentication and access to graph and how those things all play together. So excited to get to those three demos. But first, let's review what's going on with the rest of the program. So, of course, we want to talk about opportunities to participate with the community. We encourage all of you, any of you who are interested in joining in our community calls. So we've got our demos. Uh, encourage you, if anybody out there has a great demo, uh, I know you're all doing uh, awesome stuff for your customers, for your clients, uh, for your companies, and would love for you to get a chance to demo that stuff on one of these calls. So either this call or the client side development call, whichever one makes sense, but encourage anybody who's interested, reach out to myself or VESA, and we'll get you set up uh, to demo on these calls. It might not be like the very next call, right? Sometimes we're booked out a month, maybe two months, but we will absolutely get you onto a call and ready uh, to show off your great work for everybody in the community to see. This is also a great way to get visibility for yourself and your projects, your company, and your work. Uh, fantastic to see those demos. And I know I really learn a ton to see those demos from everybody out there in the community. As well, we encourage everyone uh, to contribute on GitHub. So contributions can take a number of forms. You can report issues uh, that uh, you might find with any of our libraries or packages. Of course, we don't love to get issues, but we love to get them reported so we can get them fixed or answer your questions or whatever it might be. You can also contribute. Of course, we accept pull requests for any and all of our libraries. They're all open source. Uh, and as well, if you have an opportunity, somebody might ask a question in the issues list and nobody has had a chance to answer them and you might know the answer, that's a great opportunity to participate as well is to go ahead and you know jump in and answer that person's question if you happen to know uh, the answer and uh, what they're looking for. So finally, uh, provide feedback. So we appreciate feedback on any and all of the things we do. It helps us improve what our stuff is for everybody. So that includes these calls, the libraries we put out there, uh, the other resources we put out there, documentation, our other video series and so forth. We appreciate feedback on all of those things. And as always, actionable feedback or, or constructive feedback is best because that gives us an idea of what would help. Uh, so instead of like, hey, the documents suck, better to say, hey, the documentation, I wish I had more information about some topic, right? That really helps us target the work and really correct things to help everybody out and improve things for everybody. So appreciate everybody's help uh, with the demos, the contributions, and the feedback. It really helps us grow and improve for all. A quick list of all the links there, the various uh, resources across the Patterns and Practices program. You've got our YouTube channel, uh, which is all of our developer YouTube uh, related stuff. Those are the official Microsoft developer videos. Then you've got the community videos. So that's a whole set of uh, recordings from all of our calls, as well as calls, uh, or I'm sorry, recordings from other folks doing demos about different topics, whether it's provisioning or uh, authentication or other areas. Uh, great resources to see all those videos and get caught up on topics. As well, sometimes if you've got a new project you're starting and aren't sure about some feature, great place to look for that information as well. You've got, of course, all our open source repositories. So github.com slash SharePoint, PMP, Office Dev, and Microsoft Graph. Great places to go, get information, contribute, learn. Uh, we love having your samples added in there for everybody to see. Lo love getting your feedback on SharePoint Framework, on Microsoft Graph, on anything PNP. Love to see that. Uh, love to see the increased usage across all those things. So fantastic there. And then as well, the sample galleries I mentioned, we've got web parts, extensions, list formatting, and then team samples. Uh, definitely great resources for folks starting out on projects. I know when I've got uh, something to do, I usually go check to see if there's a sample that covers that so I can at least get an idea on how to get started. So definitely check those out as well. And then we've got our uh, sharing is caring 
uh, initiative, which we'll talk about in a second, but all of our initiatives, all of our patterns and practices stuff, uh, aka.ms slash m365 PNP will take you to the landing page, uh, newly redesigned landing page to help you find all these things. So if there's one link to remember, aka.ms slash m365 PNP. So for guidance, this is the sharing is caring program I mentioned. If you're a new contributor or looking, uh, you know, how do I get started contributing to PNP? Maybe I've never done a pull request before. Remember, maybe I'm not familiar with the PNP uh, repositories. I'd like a little bit more information on getting started. We have these great sharing is caring sessions started by David Warner. Uh, their next uh, contributing sessions are August 21st, 24th, and 26th. And then we've got community docs sessions on the 28th and the 31st. We got two sessions on the 31st. These are all free and put on uh, by the community. So you can always register at aka.ms sharing is caring. And uh, again, all free, great way to get started. If you have questions on getting started, uh, this is a great place to, to go get those questions answered and submit that first pull request. Uh, we really appreciate all the great work from everybody out there in the community. Pull requests, big and small, are all incredibly valuable and appreciated. So a uh, great place to get started and check those sessions out. We do have, uh, I believe, next week, yeah, the 11th is next week, is our community, our monthly community call, which is kind of a roll-up call of all the other things that have gone on throughout the month. Uh, updates from SharePoint engineering, user voice status on various SharePoint extensibility things, updates on our contributors and companies, and then uh, we're going to have our main topic, latest power platform integration with SharePoint Online. Chax is going to be here to talk through that. Uh, always great to see what Chax uh, is going to show off every month. And then uh, we'll probably maybe have time for Q&A. Uh, on the monthly call, we usually do have a little bit of time for Q&A, so encourage folks to join that call and really get a great overview of the whole program uh, on our monthly call. So reoccurring invite, aka MSSP dash call for our monthly call next week on August 11th, which I think is Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. And then a uh, big announcement, or I think uh, maybe we're not the first to announce it, but we've got a PNP virtual conference coming up on September 1st. So that's uh, very soon now. This is again, all free. So ak.msPNP virtual conference, get in there, free content. Uh, it's virtual, so it's online. So you'll be able to attend uh, from wherever you are in the world. So no geographic restrictions there. Uh, certainly join in. It's put on almost entirely by MVPs from folks in the community. So excited to see that. So this isn't uh, something that you're going to be hearing from the same Microsoft people again. It's going to be all folks from the community driving it and really excited to see this. So check out the site, register. It's got a listing of all the sessions, the uh, times for the sessions, and uh, people might call that a schedule. And then, uh, you know, the, the ways to register there. So check that out, free conference. Um, and there's a whole bunch of uh, awesome presentations, awesome presenters, and awesome resources there. So quick updates on the libraries. Somebody jump in if you uh, meant to talk to some of these slides. Otherwise, I'm going to go through them. So CSOM Core Library, the August release is planned for the 10th. That is going to be uh, include modern search and navbar improvements, system text JSON support, provisioning uh, with lower privileged accounts. That's something we've been looking at to not require. Uh, what can we do for provisioning that doesn't require like tenant admin? Um, so some improved support with that, and then lots of you know as always you know small fixes and small improvements there. I can add a bit there. If oh, needs. great! Yes, please jump yeah. in. So yeah, so the, the system text JSON, what we're slowly starting to do is to migrate away from Newton Soft JSON. You might be aware, or maybe you're not aware, but uh, the person behind Newton Soft actually joined Microsoft already quite a while ago, I think. And system text JSON is sort of the Microsoft provided assembly that replaces Newton Soft. It's a bit different than Newton Soft in some respects, but we're slowly migrating away from Newton Soft. What is not on this list, but we're also slowly starting to do is that internally we use um, ADL for authentication to acquire access tokens and those kind of things. And we're slowly uh, migrating. We will start to slowly migrate uh, away also from ADL and move to MSAL. That was my addition on this. That's a slow process. It will not happen one day to the other, but it will happen in due time. Back to you, Patrick. 
Awesome. Thank you, Erwin. Appreciate that. And uh, so future roadmap things there, working on different things. Of course, uh, welcome folks' contributions to this and all of our other efforts. Uh, you can always get the latest uh, NuGet there at the uh, URL there, nuget.org, packages, SharePoint, PMP, core, online. Uh, oh, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention we're into uh, 56,000 tenants now with the core library. Uh, was used in 56,000 tenants uh, last month. So super excited to see that. For PMP PowerShell, Erwin, did you want to talk through this? Yep. Yeah. Great. So the August of July was a cleanup month. A lot of cleanup happening. We've changed a lot of the underlying authentication code, also using MSVL in, in this case. Should not affect you. You might see some better error messages or sometimes when you were using connecting in some certain way and you executed command and we actually were not able to execute this command because of us not being able to retrieve an access token, you will now actually get a message what happened and why we cannot execute the command, uh, the commandlet. Um, a, a big change is that we will not release MSI installer files anymore. We've been doing that for years now. Um, allowing you to install PMP PowerShell offline by basically taking the MSI file. There is no technical reason uh, to use an MSI file. You can actually, on a machine that is connected to the internet, use P uh, PowerShell itself to, um, instead of install the module, you use save module is actually written in the release notes that we have linked there. Uh, save module, and then you just copy that folder to the correct location on your target machine and the commandlets will be available for you there. So it's it's not an somewhat it's not a much more complex process actually to use, but it would uh, um, it's a it's a bit of a hassle for us every year every month to build the MSI files and actually we have to go through several signing um, uh, sir, um, cycles uh, to get everything up and running running again. Um, there is barely any new commandlets uh, in the August release. There's just a few, I actually, weirdly enough, ran into the fact that we have no commandlets to um, update term stores, term settings, uh, term sets, and that kind of stuff. They were not there for some weird reason. They never showed up. So I created a few, but that's basically the only new command list. The rest of the code is just internal cleaning up and everything ready to get for, to get ready for PowerShell v4, which will be .NET standard based. Uh, we had to do a lot of cleaning, a lot of refactoring and those kind of things. So that happened. Uh, we changed the namespace internally already as a preparation for an upcoming name change. So it will not be called SharePoint PNP PowerShell, but it will be called PNP PowerShell because it's not only focusing on SharePoint anymore. We now also do Teams and, um, I have some planner commandlets also in the works. So that's it from PowerShell. Awesome. Thank you, Erwin, for those updates. And now modernization tooling, Bert is out. So unless somebody jumps in, I'll talk through this slide. No big changes uh, for the modernization tooling. Uh, looking into supporting other input sources for page transformations. Uh, we do have the scanner. The July uh, release was on the 22nd. That's 2.14 release. So continuous result file writing, Azure AD app-only authentication for uh, the government clouds or the, the sovereign clouds. Uh, and then well, as well, scanning for workflows and then uh, improved uh, file detection. So uh, some workflow-related improvements to that. Uh, working in the future, of course, on bug fixes and then tell us more about what we might be missing. So for the Yo team stuff, I think I saw Victor on the it's call. Here. Yes, great. Cool. So it hasn't m happened much uh, with new releases during the summer. I um, finally took some vacation and did not write any code for these kind of things except my home automation. Uh, so uh, the last version is 2.15. Uh, we passed way past 20K downloads now, which is really cool. Uh, a little bit dip, of course, during the summer in a number of new uh, scaffolded projects, but uh, we're closing in on 5,000 new Teams project created every third month. So I think that's really cool. Uh, closest now is an upgrade to 2.16 that I've been working on uh, last night a little bit. Uh, very simple, uh, just updating some references to the new Teams SDK and, and schemas, etc. Big thing is still version 3. Uh, late August, hopefully we can have an early alpha out of that. And we also see how we can uh, work better with the, the Teams Visual Studio code add-in uh, that was released at Build a couple of months ago. And of course, as usual, uh, please help out with the uh, issues, add more uh, close issues if you can. 
uh, what we really need help with is documentation as well. And speaking of that, so in May or June, we released a training package and also the, the big new sample repo of all the, the team's applications, etc. So if you have built any cool stuff, then uh, please um, create PRs to the new team sample repository. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you for that update. And now we are into the demos. So, Chris, are you ready to show us a little more list magic? Sure. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris. We're going to talk about uh, list formatting, but also some tools that are going to help make that a little easier. So, let's take a look. So, one of the things we talked about uh, last week was the idea of using emojis in your formats, and there's all sorts of options there. You can do a lot of stuff with those. Uh, so go check out that video on the YouTube channel if you're interested in that. Today I want to talk more about the icon. So the icons are a great way to really enhance things. Because they're the same icons that are used by you know SharePoint everywhere, it's a great way to make your solutions fit in and kind of match the same style so they're not distracting or glaringly obvious that they're you know not a part of the UI. Uh, but really just can act as enhancements. You can see on the screen here we've got some examples. All right, so this is just using buttons and using these icons directly from uh, Fluent UI. And you can see that they're actually matched the same ones that are in the interface, right? So if I select one of these, and you can see the edit icon all matches the share, you know, delete all that. So that's a really nice thing here. So now we can take advantage of that. Um, and putting those in as simple as just typing in the name. So there's some other examples of using those icons, right? So over here, are kind of our classic severity, right? So we've got this. Uh, you know, a nice color here, but then an icon that really kind of indicate what this status column really means. So adding a little icons here and there as needed, both their buttons or just you know, side by side things can really indicate what you're trying to accomplish, right? Add into a link when you're trying to do a mail to, add a little envelope there. Uh, again, great way to kind of indicate to your users. So if there's no instruction document you got to write with this. It's pretty easy to do. If we go over to our horses site, right? We use these in the Warrior Horses site all the time. Uh, so if we take a look, we've used this a few different times, right? So we've used uh, things like icons here to indicate our drink preferences. Go over to our things list. Uh, we've got things like the check mark icons or checkbox icons here to indicate whether it's a task or not. Really makes that much more obvious that it is a task. We've even shown in the past calls some advanced things like overlaying icons on top of each other, right? So we've taken the health icon, laid it over the heart fill icon, right? We created a nice a uh, pretty picture here. We've gone even further over here. We've done the same thing with the emoji type icons, and we've added a little status icon. So again, you can see there's a lot to do here. So let's talk about how you do that, and what are some cool tools to make that even easier. So if I go to column settings, I'm going to format this column. And this is a sample that's available, so I'm just going to delete it. And we'll take a look here. So adding an icon is as simple as, we'll preview that so we can just see that the icon's gone. To add in icons as simple as just typing in things like helm type, All right? We'll do a div, you can do a span, you can do whatever you need to. And then adding attributes, add another squiggly here. And I'm gonna say icon name. And here's where we just type in an icon, right? So if I've got like a, kind of a vehicle themed or transportation type icon, I can choose bus, right? I'm gonna make that a little bigger so we can see that style. Because these work this way, you can apply just standard styles like font size to these. So we could say 48. That sounds good. It's probably pretty, plenty big. Oh, well, yeah, plenty big. Okay, so we can see now we've got a nice bus, and that's cool. You know, and if I wanted to do some other ones, I could do like taxi, right? Ooh, a fancy taxi, right? And there's a bunch of different ones. You know, in fact, there's almost... 2,000 plus icons out there. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that these are case sensitive. So, if I type bus with a lowercase b, well, never mind, I'm a liar. Really, that's true. <laughs> that works. <laughs> awesome. Okay. But what if I wanted to do something like uh, a boat, right? So, I'm just going to guess. Surely sure there's a boat, there's a bus, there's a taxi, there's a car, all these other things. So, preview. No boat. That's terrifying. That's sad. So, what if I want to go find out if there's a boat somewhere? So, well, some of the tools we've shown before are if you go to like uh, aka.ms slash fluent UI, you'll be taken to this lovely site. And if you go to styles and we click on iconography, 
And if we scroll down past all this code details that we don't care about for this, we can see there's some icons here, right? So I'll search for boat. You know, I just typed in boat here, no results, very sad. Now there's a couple of issues with this, right? Um, if I look down eventually, if I scroll and I'm very, very careful, I might see that there is in fact a boat icon. Right. Oh, there it is. Fairy solid. Of course, of course, it's called fairy solid. That makes sense. All right. So now if I type in fairy, there it is. Right. So I can use that now, but I have to type in fairy um, and I have to hover over to see what the actual name is. So there's some less than desirable things here, um, including I don't know what the heck this sort order is. Right. So it's not alphabetical. I don't even know what it is. So that's one tool you can use. There's another tool here that's referenced as the Fluent UI icons tool. If we head over there, this is one I actually like a little better. This is the one I've sent end users to before. When you create like a column and we want to say what icon it is, and you say, go pick out icons and then we'll show them there. Um, I've sent them here. And this is much better. It has the same problem though. If I search boat, I'm still not going to find anything. Um, and the sort order is a little weird, but it has nice features. Like if I right click, I can say copy friendly name. So I don't have to remember, you know, whatever this was, admin A logo inverse 32, very catchy, right? I can just copy that friendly name and I'm good to go. So I copy that, I head over back to here and in my icon namespace, paste that and I preview and there it is, right? So that's pretty cool. Just close the loop with type in fairy. Ooh, pretty. And that's great. And now one of the really powerful things about this site though, is that it can be used to generate your own font files. So if you're doing some hardcore coding outside of list formatting and you really want to have just a subset, right? You can generate your own font files. It's very, very cool. The other thing about this, though, is icons are added here before they're actually added to UI Fabric. So they'll show up, or Fluent UI, I should say. Uh, they're added here before then, so there's some icons that are going to show up here that are actually not available to you yet, and that can be really frustrating. So I want to talk about a brand new tool uh, that we can use now. So it's called Flycon. So it's flycon.io. Go there. We'll check this out. This site is live. It's in beta. So interested in all your feedback on it. But this is an idea of it's a fluent icon search. All right, so now, for instance, we solve some of the problems like if I search boat, hey, it shows up, right? Or my classic is uh, dog, right? So I used to always search dog, right? But how would I have known that that was actually fang body, right? But now I could search by dog and there it is. Some of the other things you can do here are that we've got full on categories here. So if I just wanted to see what vehicles are there, right? I don't want to scroll through that giant list. There they are. There's all the vehicles, so I can easily do some pretty cool stuff here, right? So if I come down here, I've got all my different categories. I can search between them, uh, do whatever I need to. I've got some of that same kind of copy functionality, right? So if I hover over, add bookmark, I can actually hit this button and it's copied to my clipboard. And I can come in here and I can paste that as well, right? So very helpful. And that's one thing you can do here. Now, if we take a look, um, on top of that, so if I pick something like games and sports, right, we can see this. Um, if you want to check out your theme styles, right, there's full theme support here. So if I want to switch this to orange or red, or let's just go straight up dark blue, right, so you can start to see how these icons might look uh, directly inside your site. Right now, if you don't like some of these uh, kind of default ones, right, there's some other options down here. All right, so for one, we'll make these large. If you want to show the name all the time, you don't like that box, whatever you want to do, but there's some advanced color options here. So by default, it's the neutral primary color that's shown. But if you wanted to say, always show them in red, right? And you want the uh, box background because you're not a good designer like me. Uh, yellow light. Oh, that's beautiful, right? So I can even come in here and I can say, let's do a custom color, right? So I'll kind of change that up. But the whole idea here is that I can really see how these icons might look. So we'll come back here. Uh, we'll go back here. All right. And we'll take a look. So one of the things we can do also is when we're looking at these, we can see variations right here. We can see the different colors those might appear. We can also export it in as, as an SVG. So we can export that and we just get a nice trophy two solid. We click on that, there it is, beautiful. So this is a great way to kind of get more familiar with the icons, much more consumable format. So the idea here is to make things a little easier uh, for end users and for people that don't want to mess with all the extra code and everything else. You just want to be able to grab icons and be able to find them, right? Because it can be very frustrating 
having 2,000 plus icons, some with very, very strange names that apply specifically to what Microsoft intended, but maybe has nothing to do with what you intended, right? You know, an airplane is a good example of that. So if we type in airplane, you'll see this one, airplane, airplane, but this one's called arrivals, right? And so that can be a little frustrating, uh, but pulling all these out, you can really find exactly what you're looking for very quickly. So let's take a look and review. Come back over here. So using your icons in the formats, right? Just apply it with the attributes. You can use icon name. Uh, apparently, this is no longer true. So that's great news. We can get rid of that, though. Boop. Okay, so not every icon is supported. Um, that's not too bad right now with the flight on that I own. Uh, but there is some features coming that should make that a little more obvious what is and isn't supported everywhere. Um, and again, you can apply sizes and colors, and you can do theme support. So icons are really awesome for all of that. Now, in fact, what if I want to use an icon here? Now, PowerPoint has a ton of icons, but what if I want to use, I mean, obviously, it's a presentation about the Fluent UI icons. So here's a, a thing we can do, right? So if we were to type in that, uh, say, dog again, right? If we take our dog, we're going to export that, we're going to save it as SVG. We can actually just grab that, head over to PowerPoint, just drop it right on. All right, so now we've got a nice little icon directly in our PowerPoint. We can use those wherever we need to. We can open those up um, and do all sorts of cool stuff, right? So we'll just change the color of that. Uh, ooh, that's pretty. All right, so there you go. So that's pretty cool. So check out flycon.io. It is free and will remain free. It's got full categories and tags, the theme support, some more stuff with themes is coming soon, um, and some additional export options as well. But I'm interested in your feedback. Uh, there's links in there to provide feedback for, say, maybe you don't think the category was correct or you don't think the tags were correct. Uh, very possible. It takes a lot of time to categorize 2,000 plus icons so, and do that manually. So I'd be happy to have your feedback on that. So here's some of the links for those items here. These are the two uh, other browsers I showed you, and then this is the Flycon.io. I'm sure the uh, David or whoever else has been pasting all those links down there. Uh, it, it was just launched this morning. So if there's any issues with DNS or anything, just let me know. Okay, that's all I got. Thanks. Very cool. Thank you. Um, I don't understand why you didn't understand that was called Fang Body. It's pretty obvious, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we do what we can. So with that, thank you, Chris. Another fantastic demo. Very excited to see that new service. Uh, definitely, everybody, check that out. Feedback uh, is always appreciated. And uh Excited to have another tool for everybody's tool belt as they're doing their development. So now I believe we're going to move on to Madhan. Hey, I'm here. Yep. Hey, great. All right. So let me just quickly share my screen. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Madhan. I'm a product manager with Microsoft Teams. I'm with Microsoft for a little over five years. Uh, today, as a part of App Template series, you know, I'm super excited to talk about one of the app templates called Grow Your Skills. That we shipped in, that we shipped and published to GitHub in the last month. So I'm super excited to talk about that and show like we'll cover the overview and value proposition of this app template. And we have some real cool demos. And of course, we'll share some resources at the end to get started with. So what is Grow Your Skills? I think we're gonna go to the next demo. Adham, let's get you rescheduled for a future call. So sorry about that, but but you're just dropping out and we're getting a lot of feedback. Uh, no worries. You know, there is a lot of break, right? So no problem. Yeah, I can yeah, continue. Sorry. But... Yeah, sorry yeah. about that. Uh, no worries. Yep. Yeah, man, we'll, we'll get you back. And uh, which uh, really interesting topic. So I want to absolutely learn more about this. And so, like I said, we'll get this back on a future call and apologize to all for the audio. Appreciate everybody being sure to let us know that there are audio issues. So Marcus, if you want to go ahead and take over. Yes, I can. Uh, take it away, and thanks. Just a short intro to myself, who doesn't know me, the whole slide is for you, and uh, who have seen my last demo, for instance, five months ago, only the last line is for you, um, which only changed since then. And today, I'm going to talk about the Microsoft uh, Teams messaging extension and especially about the authentication part uh, to access, for instance, the Microsoft Graph, but this you could also read. Um, replace to other third party APIs where you have uh, authentication in. And let me first uh, show you what uh, the scenario is about. So, the scenario is about a small document library, it could also be a bigger one, but uh, just for example, 
we have several documents and some of the documents are, uh, yeah, need some review and this uh, we want to uh, communicate about in Microsoft Teams. What we need for that is of course uh, or is uh, the library and the Microsoft Teams app. We come to that in a minute. But what we also need as a messaging channel is a bot channel. So we need some settings here. And, and this bot, and this is very important, has a custom uh, Microsoft Graph connection. And this Graph connection um, is simply an app registration um, which needs to be configured and needs to be placed here inside this bot message settings. And how does this work? In, uh, when we have installed our app, we can, uh, for instance, reach this messaging extension here from the Composer bar. We click on it, and then we get the documents shown here that needs a review. The display, and this is what I have to add, is a uh, search command based. So you have no much, in this scenario, you have not much uh, uh, customization options here. You can only list some uh, documents or some other items and then you can pick them and put them in. Of course, you can also move and what you can on top do is uh, once you have them, you can also filter them. So for instance, filter out all the document stuff and only get the special one. This would work as well. And on top, we can also configure that stuff. So in our case, um, we have a direct library connection, no search something. Um, so uh, in this example, what I'm doing here is just putting my site ID and my list ID where I can retrieve my data from and uh, configure and that stuff. So this is how it works uh, from a user perspective. And now let's check how it works from code perspective. Therefore, we can attach our debugger, switch back, and then we are in our debugger and in a uh, so-called middleware processor here. And um, what we did here is uh, we were trying an authentication against our connection name from the connected bot channel. And in this case, we have the positive case here. We already received a token. And if we receive this token, we will continue later. Otherwise, we would come into a sign-in authentication. This I will show later because therefore I will have to sign out because you already have seen um, that I was successfully running that demo uh, a minute ago. So let's first continue with the positive part. So we already have signed in. And then we are coming first here to our so-called initial run. This initial run means we have no further filtering. So we will show all the parts. We have no uh, search, um, search value to uh, incorporate. And then we will go on and uh, go to our graph controller and retrieve the documents from there. This is what I will um, shorten up here. Once we have our documents, we can see that we have four of them. We will iterate them and transform them into adaptive cards. This adaptive card is the final result we see in the messaging extension and also with our action buttons here. And then what we also have on top is this small preview cards. And this is the small, not really customizable result in our search result window. And um, so here we only have a title text, our description, and an image. Yeah, there's not much to customize. So here's our preview. We can now uh, continue. And what we will see when we go back to our uh, result, of course, is the, um, that this took too long. And uh, in this case, this is because our debugging and our, my explanation took too long uh, for Teams. Teams could wait for that. And to jump or further, I would just have to turn off debugging once again, that we can go on and come to the next point. So once again, we have our documents. And what we do now here is we will insert a document. We can also send this, but this doesn't really matter for the next step. 
um, what I want to show you in the next step, and then we'll have to turn my debugger on again. Is the action. Of course, we have a small view action. This is only HTML link. This is not really, uh, this is quite boring, but we also have a review action. And this review action has directly a connection to the SharePoint via graph. And we will only uh, extend this a bit. We could enter some uh, date here and we can finally kick off the action and put this to review. Then we are back in our middleware on the card button clicked here. And what we will do here is now we get our uh, graph controller again. We will get our site IDs, um, our list IDs from the configuration here. The code is not quite correct, but anyway, I will get some values and then I will finally kick off the update item. I will kick off my graph connection. And go through that. And what I finally did, um, also I can show you in the last point, this is not really necessary. This is just for demonstration purposes. Here at the end, I'm signing out now. So in my next step, I can show you uh, how it looks like when the user is not signed in. Yeah, this is not officially, this has nothing to do with uh, an update uh, of a document, but just for demonstration purposes. Okay, switching back to our team or better, let's check our library here and our special document, what happened to it. There we are, we have an update. So we remember the date, 1st of February. There we are. So finally, this doesn't really matter. The, the, re the action took place. Um, now we get back in and remember we signed out and this time, we are in our debugger mode here, and there our token is undefined. So we have no token, and we press F5, and we will return an action here. Hope this works, and there it is. Here's our sign-in action. We can set this up. This works seamlessly, and now we are back, and here we have our token again. This is signed in. This is not a process for minutes. This is a process for a long time. So uh, if I make a demo tomorrow again, uh, and I would not uh, execute my sign out, I would be still sign in because this is an awesome indication again for the boss channel. Quickly run through it. Oh, I'm fast enough. You've seen that already. No, I was not fast enough. Anyway, we can turn off again the debugger and show you once again. There's your data. We are missing one document, of course, because this is already reviewed and that's it. So this was from my side for today. Um, I think David already shared uh, my blog series on that topic. If you want to get uh, deeper information, also the code repository. And to get back to my slides again, to sum up what we have seen, we have a search based messaging extension. We have seen we have seen something about authentication, especially here in the back end. We have seen searching and filtering, and we have seen the configuration part. What I'm currently working on is to transform this to an action-based scenario. And the main difference from an action-based scenario would be here, you could control what I uh, showed you in the search results where you cannot control much of the AI. You can control, uh, let me call it the first initiation. You must not, you can of course uh, display uh, yeah, a complex uh, grid or something like that, even of results, but you can also jump uh, totally uh, come in with an input form or something like that. And um, this is what I'm working there. There you can also work with authentication in the front end. So you can use the preview SSO feature in combination with the on behalf flow. I'll show you some uh, resources for that in the next slide. And this authentication and the whole so-called task module in the front end could also be replaced by SharePoint framework since the latest version 1.11 and there it would be even easier combined with the authentication. Okay, as promised, also for the videos, uh, some resources, uh, my blog series and uh, the repository currently still in my own, what once I find some time promised, uh, Patrick, Victor, I will share it also with the team sample if appreciated.
and then some uh, uh, what I mentioned just about the front end authentication for action based scenarios, you could use uh, the SSO authentication, for instance, described in the wiki of the Yo Teams generator and also a great blog post from Victor on the second step, the get access token on behalf. That's from my side. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. So, with that, we'll get back over to the slides. I think we're going to have a little bit of time for some Q&A. So if people have questions and want to drop those into the chat, certainly open to try to answer those as we can. So great demos there uh, from Chris, from Madhan, and from Marcus. Apologize to everybody for those audio issues. Apologize to Madhan for the audio issues. Um, as was said in the chat, a lot of work goes into preparing these presentations. It's really uh, a bummer when they don't work out. So we'll get him on a future call with the app template demo. Uh, and so that will be really great to see it. I'm sorry we weren't able to deliver that one today, but two other great demos and uh, we'll have Madhan back in the future. So thank you all for that. So some Q&A, uh, let's see, applause. Is there a sample reference to save bot conversation to SharePoint list? I'm not aware of a sample that meets that specific requirement. If you figure it out, I think that would be a great sample to submit uh, into the sample gallery. Any other Q and A, or I guess Qs from people? I'm supposed to have the As. Well, with that, I will say thank you to everybody. Uh, the recording will be available in about 24 hours on our YouTube channel, give or take a little bit. Follow us on Twitter. Our next general development call will be August 20th. That's in two Thursdays at the same time. And our next SharePoint framework call will be August 13th. That is next Thursday. Uh, at 7 a.m. Our next monthly call is next Tuesday, August 11th. Uh, so definitely uh, please join any and all of those calls as you have time. And uh, as of course, please, if you're interested, register for the free PNP conference. I think it's gonna be, a I know it's gonna be a lot of great material from a lot of great presenters. I think it's a fantastic opportunity to have a nice free virtual conference uh, and learn a lot. So excited uh, for that to be a thing and to see all those great presentations ready to go. So thank you all very much. These are uh, a list of all our various uh, developer community calls and other developer community calls, such as the graph call. Definitely, you can check out the graph call. They do a, an awesome call all about the graph, the graph SDK, and the, the, the work they're doing to improve the experiences for graphs. So that's a great call, uh, as well as the rest of these are fantastic calls if you have the time to get on. So thank you to everybody for attending the calls. Thank you to Chris, Madhan, and Marcus for the, the demos and taking the time there. Appreciate it. Thank you to all of you for attending. And thank you to everybody uh, maybe watching this on YouTube or listening after the fact. Appreciate your participation as well. So thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your week, and we will talk soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>